the story must go on Cause a lot of time is gone We must be ready to go Despite Alien Isolation being one of my best games ever, thanks. One of the best horror games I've ever played, certainly. One of the few to actually terrify me and be shit your pants scary. Despite me really loving this game, to the point where it was one of my games of the year when it came out, I didn't know it was coming to Switch. Or if I did, I'd completely forgotten. I did not know Alien Isolation was coming to Switch until I was checking out the eShop. I, I usually just check up on all the stores uh, at least once a week to see what's going on. And I saw it in the coming soon section. I'm like, well, as with most ports on the Switch, I will use this as an excuse to play it again. Because it's on a little screen now, and that for some reason makes it better. I don't know why it makes it better, but it literally does. So I downloaded it, been playing it, and had to do a video on it because... The port is magnificent. Like, I cannot overstate enough. I think this is by far the best Switch port that I've certainly ever played. It looks incredible. It runs really well. One of the most uncompromising port jobs I've ever seen. Now, concessions have obviously been made. If you've seen any of the, the deep dive comparison videos for this, you'll see that certain shadows are no longer present. Certain effects have been scaled back or removed. But the choices they made in what to take out was so judiciously done, like really, really well judged, that the overall game just... It looks so good and runs so well. And if you have seen those comparisons, you will see that in in several ways, Alien Isolation on Switch actually looks better than the PlayStation 4 version. While being scaled back in some areas, um, objects are smoother. There's better anti-aliasing. Um, just overall looks cleaner. Than, than the PlayStation 4 version, which is just astounding. In my experience, it's run really well, whether it's in Doctor Mode or Handheld Mode. I've been mostly playing it Handheld Mode when I've not been collecting footage, but it looks really good in either mode and just super impressive in Handheld Mode. I'm always impressed by games that are, look really good and run really well in Handheld Mode, because I really like portable gaming. That's one of my favorite things is, it's why I like the Switch so much, is not just the original stuff it has, but when it gets these ports of games I really like on other systems, but will get an extra little kick out of playing them portably. I mean, it's just great for that, and this is a fine example. And, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with this. Um, even some of the ports that have run quite nicely on the Switch have had some more notable downgrades. Um, the recently released Witcher 3 on Switch is a, a quite a noticeable step back from other, you know, from the game running on other platforms. But this, I mean, the fact that it's comparable to the PS4 version and in some way superior, I mean, that deserves a little round of applause just for the sheer skill and the, the, the cleverness in, in this port job. Part of what made Alien Isolation work so well was the moody atmosphere. They wanted to get something that looked and felt as tense as the original Alien. And a lot of effects can be used for that, like, like certain lighting effects, um, smoke, the smoke and the steam that constantly fills corridors. That's important. That builds the atmosphere, the sense of tension, the idea of things moving and swirling in the environment. And of course, a vision being obscured by by a lack of light or too much guff in the way. So nailing all of that is really important because if you scale back the wrong thing, you can, well, I mean, just look at the, the awful Silent Hill HD collection and the fact that some fog and that was removed from Silent Hill 2 and it exposed stuff in the environment that, that wasn't meant to be seen, certainly not in the way that it ends up exposed. And that fog was there, um, not just, uh, you know, render less but it created a real nice mood to it a sense of being unsure what's ahead of you 
you make the wrong call there and you tank the entire atmosphere, which is crucial for a nerve-wracking horror game, and they preserve that excellently. And I'm never not impressed playing this on a Switch when I see the little effects, the little steam rising and smoke and um, obs like, like gas wavy things behind the fire. There are so many better ways I could have put that. But you know when something's behind fire and the heat makes it wobble behind it? Like if there was a, a little guy waving at you behind the fire, then he'd look all wibbly wobbly behind it. Do you know what I'm talking about? It looks really good in Alien Isolation when there's fire. I'll take the excuse as well to just talk about Alien Isolation in general again, because, God, this game is good. I absolutely loved it when it first came out, and I still absolutely love it. I am very hard to scare when it comes to media. I think because my life in general, in real life, is just terrifying on a day-to-day -day basis. Um... So when I watch horror films or play horror games, I'm not as scared as I like to be. And that's not bravado. I genuinely wish that I could, um, that more things in films and games would genuinely scare me. Um, but this one, oh, this one does it to me every time. Even in handheld mode, which is, of course, even harder to make scary because you've got so much, unless you've got headphones on, so much exterior around you. Um, especially the way I play it. Like, I'll have, like... I don't know, Game of Thrones rerun or an old YouTube video or something going on the TV while I play handheld. Just a nice little atmosphere for me. But even with that going on, even with, you know, watching Game of Thrones with King Robert going back from season one, just going, oh, Ned, Ned, I used to be a fighter, now I'm a fat king. Oh, Ned, I need you to be my hand because I'm a fat king. Even with that malarkey going on, I'm still on the edge of my seat, hunched over the switch, just going, Oh, gold! Oh, gold! It's come out the ceiling again! Oh, gold! Gotta hide under a table! Gotta make a loud thing happen so it runs away! Look at its big muscular legs! Um, yeah. So, uh, it's still really spooky scary. Um, I loved stuff like this, how there were humans on board that were after you as well. But they were at odds with the Xenomorph and you could set them against each other. That just happened dynamically. Um, there was an NPC with a gun, or rather an enemy with a gun, and the Xenomorph saw that person. And then that all happened on its own. Which is another really good thing about Alien Isolation is, well, the double-edged sword of its unpredictable nature. They didn't necessarily have the Xenomorph move on a, a preset pattern in every level. Uh, which would take some of the mystique out of it. So that alien just wanders around. And I say it's a double-edged sword because sometimes that can be really frigging annoying when you're trying to do something and it's just wandering around with no clear sense that it's ever going to go the fuck away. Um, and there are things you do to help control the Xenomorph's movements, throw like little noise-making bombs and create disturbances... Something as simple as getting, you know, enemy humans to fire on you and then hiding yourself so the Xenomorph is attracted by the noise and then just goes to town. But it can be irritating. Uh, I've been stabbed in the back a few times by the Xenomorph's tail when I'm just trying to look something up, in, like, on one of the in-game computers. Um, but that's the price you kind of pay for real nail-biting sequences where you are moving quietly and you can hear it scrabbling in the ceiling. You can hide into a, like, crawl into a vent to hide, but the alien likes vents as well, so you never know that it might, you know, when it's waiting in the wings for you or it'll just crawl in after you. There is a, a real sense of, of creepy unknown to this game because you don't know what it's going to do next. Uh, and then you add into that things like the working Joes, which I didn't... I wasn't able to grab any footage of those for this video, but if you've seen them, they're amazing. Basically, they're like crash test dummy androids that have rubber faces and dead eyes just to make them super creepy. And they've all gone haywire and come after you while still talking as if they're subservient uh, helper robots. Um, they made this game so... so well. And I'm trying to apply more deep critique to it, but... It's just really good.
And it deserves all the credit in the world for making Xenomorphs scary again. Um, aliens, of course, turned them into cannon fodder, which was great for the film it was. I love Aliens. Um, but ever since then, that's where pop culture has mostly embraced them as a, a, a hive army for Marines to chew up with guns. When, of course, the original Alien was more like a haunted house movie in space. Uh, it was very much a, a slow, dread, dread-building horror film. Um, and the Xenomorph's been so overexposed. It's like Cthulhu. Uh, pop culture has been so exposed to the Xenomorph that a lot of the mystique has been taking, taken away, and that's not helped with by Ridley Scott's nonsense with the Prometheus and that alien alien cabinets one. But Creative Assembly took so many cues from the first Alien film, and it shows from the environmental design to the music they use, and just the way that Alien stalks. And they made it feel heavy and big, like it stamps, it makes clomping noises. It doesn't feel like it's a disposable bug. It is a big, massive, fuck-off, knob-headed alien, and it wants to stab you up and put its big creepy hand over your face or stab you with its little mouth inside of its mouth. It was just a really clever game, and this is an equally clever port. Uh, very recommended, very recommended. If you haven't played it before, but you like the idea of a creepy, spooky alien game, and, you know, you don't mind the occasional frustration, or you think it's worth it like I do, then this is as fine a time as any to pick it up, and if you have played it, but you're like me, you get a little extra kick out of playing something portable, then, again, you can't really go wrong with it. And that's that, I just wanted to, like, point at it and say, I've been playing that, that's good. I've, I've done that. Job done. Good. 